Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and Re- Enforcement. Strap in all ye spiritual astronauts as we launch for inner space. Three weeks from now, boy, I am so excited. I can't sit still. Three weeks from now, August 17th, God realized man, Swamji Viswa Yogi, is going to be here. I spoke with him last year. What an amazing interview that was. I had the opportunity, the blessed, I need to humble myself here, the blessed opportunity to speak with Swamji uh, face-to-face in person, have him tell me some things about my past, my present, and my future life. And part of that future, lo and behold, happens to be Center of Light Radio with his blessings and an award for humanitarian uh, work, um, of being of service. And I don't say that to brag. Uh, maybe I can brag a little. I love what I do. Um, but his blessings to continue with the work I'm doing, which is now Center of Light Radio here on Inception Radio Network, an upgrade, absolutely for sure. Love it. Um, I'm really um, kind of torn, so to speak, about the questions I'm going to be posing to Swamji. I mean, how often do you get to speak to a God's real, realized man and ask him those things that you deem important? So I want to make sure that you understand that the, the avenue for you to contact me, email, send me an email. If you have a question, one question, because I'm sure I'm going to get flooded with uh, all kinds of emails in my inbox. Um, if you have any question that you feel is absolutely important to the betterment and the welfare of humanity, contact me at Keith Anthony Blanchard at Gmail. Keith Anthony Blanchard at Gmail. And maybe you can put in the title of the email, uh, questions for Swamji. Make sure it's something important, something that is real, something that it's not about your personal life, something that we can use. That knowing that the answer that we glean and the information that we get from that could better the world. I, I want to take your emails for that particular uh, idea. It's important to me to know how you feel about the world we live in and what you think might need improvement. Make sure you visit the Center of Light Radio website at centeroflightradio.com. There you have access to everything I do. You can jump seat there and go to keithanthonyblanchard.com. You can find links to my movie, Do What You Love. A Path to Passionate Living, the moving about my life slash your life, how to empower you with the tools that you need to become a walking, talking, blissful human being on planet Earth in this little piece in our quadrant of our galaxy. Speaking of quadrant of our galaxy, head of security, Nucleus 8, has not gotten back with me yet, but you can bet next time I have a dialogue with him. He and I are going to have a chat about uh, the seriousness of getting him here on Center of Light Radio. He is my alien human hybrid friend who happens to be 4,740 years old. What a four-year period I had the, uh, the, the opportunity to spend time with. Uh, amazing story, amazing story. If you have not heard that story yet, go to Center of Light Radio to the archives and go look for the very first show. I believe it was April 20th of this past year. Um, and catch that r- that radio interview with Mr. Rex Hare. Also, make sure that when you are at KeithAnthonyBlanchard.com, you go to the free Anchoring Heaven on Earth audio meditation. It's a free download. Put in your email, press the button, just like that. Um, I do the meditation myself. Some really cool music, some stereo imaging happening. What I mean is put some headphones on so that you can hear some left and right imaging happening from uh, side to side. It's really, really cool. Uh, check that out. Let's see. Also, if you want to call into the show live, uh, today might be the day to do that for sure. Ms. Jeannie White is going to be on the show. Now, when I say Jeannie White, she wanted me to emphasize the fact that you spell her last name, and I don't blame her. W-H-Y-T-E. W-H-Y-T-E. Today's my, my guest is Jeannie White, and she's a psychic. And I have not asked if she would take calls in the air, but we'll, we'll see and if she's open to that. But if you want to call in just to say hi. The number you dial is 888-919-2355. 888-919-2355. Remember, if you're not at home by your computer and you want to hear your favorite show, uh, parentheses, Center of Light, <laughs> uh, you can go to your app store 
on your phone and download the Inception Radio Network app for free. Everything is easy accessible. It's right there at your fingertips. Chat room, listen, live links, news, podcast, much more. There are many ways to connect to Center of Light Radio and Inception Radio for sure. Now, let's get down to Center of Light Radio business. Today, my guest is Jeannie White. W-H-Y-T-E, Jeannie White. And we will be discussing, so you think you aren't... <laughs> that is my phone that I did not turn off with peanut butter jelly time as my ringtone. How cool is that? <laughs> uh, today our topic is, so you think you aren't psychic? Let us prove otherwise. We are all psychic. It is our soul that we need to learn how to hear. Jeannie says, I will walk everyone through exercises that she will use in her teachings to help them connect to their soul so they can use to make their best decisions. In 1979, while Jeannie White was guided to develop her psychic and intuitive gifts, she located her spiritual mentors. After learning Lynn Wall releasing, she spent 30 years passing these techniques on to others as her subsequently developed her own techniques to activate the soul's ability to engage its psychic skills. Jeannie's method are safe and effective. She is a matrix energetics. Wow, that's the, oh God, his, Richard Bartlett work. He is something else. Oh, um, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. She is a matrix energetics practitioner and study group leader, a usury Tibetan Reiki master, usury Reiki master, and arcing radial light practitioner. Jeannie has a full-time practice offering classes and workshops and continues to provide psychic readings. How to contact Jeannie? Go to her website at www.whitelightcenter.com. That's W-H-Y-T-E, lightcenter.com. Jeannie White with a Y, welcome to Center Lion Radio. <laughs> Hi, Keith. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me back. Absolutely. What have you been doing lately? Staying busy, I know that for sure. Yes, I'm running ongoing classes and workshops, as well as doing my readings, as you mentioned. And um, we have amazing people being drawn to develop their psychic abilities. For instance, I have in this new class that I just started last week, I have a psychologist, I have an engineer, there is two attorneys and an attorney intern. Can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> and more. Jeannie, how did this all start for you? I uh, read a little bit into your bio, but you know, what was going on in your life that made you lean into the metaphysical field? It was really interesting because I was 27, and that could be oftentimes that that age between 27 and 30, 31, can often be a time of uh, inner reflection for people or inner growth, and that's what happened with me. It was very normal, but I had this nagging thought. It was like, you know, when you have someone on your mind and you can't get them off your mind, but my nagging thought was, you have to find out what you came here to do, and I had no idea what that meant. I had been raised a Christian in a very strict religion, and I thought I was doing what I came here to do. I was in a career in the computer business. I was helping other people learn how to use the computer who didn't have experience, and I had come kind of from that background. I had a little bit of experience, and I was helping people back in 79 when all of these new, um, newer technologies were coming along, so I was just thrilled with my job, but I couldn't understand what this message was. But it did send me, search, send me searching, and I'm sure some of your, your listeners can relate to this, and I know you can too, that uh, back when we didn't have internet, somehow or another, I found people in Atlanta where I was living at the time who were practicing meditation, and so I was learning meditation, and I even went back to church, to a unity church, and... Um, I was going to classes and just everything that came along that I could devour, including studying all the religions. And that's what really sent me back to church, because when I had left the church um, at 19, 
I didn't ever think I would go back because it wasn't a pleasant experience from my childhood. I went studying all these religions. I found out that the founders of all these religions all said the same thing. And that made sense to me. And I think God makes sense. I think all of this makes sense. Uh, So that led me one thing to another, where in church I actually um, met Dr. Limwall and his wife, Ruth. Uh, Her spiritual name is now Yolanda. But they were giving free classes on Wednesday nights. And I would go to those. And as I said, I started meditating. But I couldn't sit in a lotus position, even when I was skinny <laughs> at 27, and focusing on my breath, uh-uh, don't, uh, couldn't go there either. It just made me anxious. But I read Egg, one of Edgar Casey's books, and he said, simply focus on a candle flame or a blank sheet of paper. And as your thoughts come in, you let them float away without criticizing yourself and gently bring your attention back to the candle flame or the blank sheet of paper. And this is to get yourself quiet. To real, the, the goal is to get quiet and still. And that, as well as using the limo releasing, which what it does, it's a very safe, effective technique that Dr. Limol used in his practice and uh, gave workshops in Atlanta and the North Georgia mountains at the St. Germain Center, and then traveled for 25 years all over the world, again, without the internet, just word of mouth, and being guided by spirit. And they even spent a lot of time in South Africa healing between white and black African-American groups. Uh, So I also include that in my class because it's such an easy and effective technique, very easy to use. It's learning to take control of your life as well as what is in your unconscious mind that are either negative emotions, which have negative energy, or limiting beliefs. And as we know from the law of attraction, like energy attracts like energy. So to get all of that cleared out, or a lot of it and continually clearing out, is essential to getting in touch with what your soul is saying, or hearing that inner voice. So that's, in a nutshell, the last 30 mm, some years of my life <laughs> that I practice meditation to get quiet and I use limo releasing. Dr. Bruce Lipton, uh, you may have heard of him. He Absolutely. was the former, yeah, he's an MD, PhD. He was a tenured professor at Stanford University Medical School teaching medical students, but he was doing research in genetics. And what he found was that. He was teaching, what he was teaching was all wrong, and he quit. And he, to quote him, he says 99.999% of what we believe is totally unconscious to us. And Dr. Carl Jung, the great psychologist, he says 90%. So how much of that is negative energy that we're carrying around that we don't know about? (laughs) And it just keeps attracting the same people and situations back into our lives, right? Yes, yes. You know, just a bit ago, you were talking about, uh, for the sake of of example and describing uh, church and then metaphysics, I had a friend of mine um, last week, we were talking about this particular healing uh, practice called radionics, and for someone that he cared about, and being a Christian, he was concerned. He said, Keith, is this about metaphysics? You know, I'm a Christian. I said, well, yes, it is about metaphysics. I said, do you know what metaphysics is? Um, I, I said, you know, do you believe that Jesus was beyond this world, beyond the physical? He said, yes, I do. I said, well, that's exactly what metaphysics is. Metaphysics is the, the, the science behind, <laughs> behind everything that's physical. And to see the shift take place in, inside of him when he came to that realization was just really, really pivotal uh, for him, but also for me to see uh, ha- for him to have a change in such a brief moment. Jeannie, do you believe that everyone has the psychic gene? Everyone is, has the ability to tap into their intuitive self, uh, direct contact with higher consciousness? Oh, absolutely. Uh, as myself, from having the own, my own experience, but from teaching this to other people, and as all the ancient mystics 
have stated, you know, we are a soul that is simply inhabiting this human spacesuit for a while. And that soul lives on. You know, and we know the body dies, but the soul lives on. And it is part of God. I was channeling a message from <clears throat> Mother Mary um, last month, and to give an example of to make it more comprehensive of how we're all part of God and we are never unattached from God, she said, we are living in an ocean of God. I thought, oh, that is so great. What an easy way to understand how we're all connected. There's no disconnect. All of our souls are connected. We're always connected to God. We're always connected to everything. And there's a lot of research. I just love the fact that science is getting on board and proving so much of what we just accepted and just as a knowing from our ancient teachings, just like being psychic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and some of the people that I work with, I, I need to write a book about, you know, for example, what I just described, how to, uh, let's see, okay. put people in such a position to use a way of explaining it that they have no choice but to see it in a more truthful way. For example, some people with a fundamental background, they will tell you all day long that God is omnipresent. Mm -hmm. But they really don't take that literally, because if they took it literally, it would answer all their questions. It would alleviate all their fears. Because, yeah. because if God is everywhere all the time, present in all places at all times, they would see that it is metaphysics. They would see that they're not separate, they would see that they are a part of the living ocean that you so well described. It's not that difficult, but I don't know if they know how literal God being omnipresent is. Yeah, it's true. And that's the, that was what I was brought up with. A lot of fear, a lot of fear around Jesus. And I did a lot of them while releasing to get, oh, get those negative programs that I had running in this organic computer. I had to neutralize that energy. And I have to tell you, I, I tell my class all the time um, and people that I know that I wish I could go to a, a masquerade ball where my ex-husband, my first husband, would be there because I am nothing like I was before I started this journey. I was negative. I didn't know that I was addicted to drama, but I was. I didn't know any other way. But now my life is so full and rich and wonderful, and I'm calm no matter what happens. <laughs> it's amazing. I spoke to a friend today I haven't talked to in many years. He says, you know, Keith, when I see pictures of myself back in the days and the early days of our rock career, music career, he goes, <laughs> I, I honestly don't know that person. I said, bro, I know exactly what you mean. Just a minute ago, we were talking about omnipresence. When you take the three omnis, omnipresence, omnipotent, and omniscient, when you take those three, you know, I've had many people say, you know, I live in the Bible Belt. No judgment, just a statement of fact. That being Me said, too. you know, how they... Uh, sometimes uh, they recoil when they hear the word psychic. Uh, and when I explain what I do to those who are curious in a way that they can, one, understand truly what it is I do, not so they can accept me, but feel better about it and also hoping that they might grasp something out of the box than they know as the normal for their life. I would say, do you believe that God is all-knowing? Well, they say, absolutely. Well, doesn't it make sense to you that if a person gets closer to God, the more they know? Doesn't it make sense to you that the closer a person gets to God in the form of omnipotence, that the more power they get? Doesn't it make sense to you that the closer you get to God in this form of omnipresence, that you feel more spiritually liberated? So these very, very simple ideas are so packed with depth and information it seems that it can be very, very easy for one to see their their majesty. So what brings you to the, the idea that we all have these abilities, Jeannie? Is this experience that you were able to tap into the part of yourself that you just saw this spiritual internet connecting to everyone and everything? Well, there were uh, ancient teachings, obviously, but through the, it's called one of the teachings that the Limwalls also taught me. It's called concept therapy, and that was channeled information from 
a gentleman who was a chiropractor, but he had been in World War One, and he was exposed to nerve gas. And they didn't know it back then, but nerve gas acts like LSD. And when he came home from the war as a chiropractor, they are taught the natural state of, a, of our bodies is health. Anything is out of balance is unhealthy or diseased. And yes. he... Told his he told his family, I have to find out what's going on. So he locked himself in the house, and when they went in like a week later, and he had written on every single piece of paper the walls and the ceiling. However, it was in a language no one understood. So they brought in language specialists and transcribed this information, which was written in ancient Sanskrit. He had gone into an altered state and channeled all this information. And from that, that was in 1943, and he, they transcribed that information, and the, that is what brought science and religion, my religious teachings, together for me when I started taking those courses, but also working with the Limwald to do all of this clearing out of negative emotions, negative ex energy from experiences, and limiting beliefs. And it's so easy to do. I've seen people get healed. I've been healed myself um, from an inner ear thing that came on suddenly, and within two hours of doing the releasing, I was fine and went to a meditation group that night. And again, this was back in 1979, 1980, so I know it works. But through the releasing, every day, consistently with a group of friends uh, and going to workshops every other weekend, all of my psychic abilities came through, the clairaudience, the clairvoyance, and even the channeling. And so what has happened and why I teach people is because I know that if I can do this, anyone can do it. And I've been proving it by teaching the classes that I offer here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And people are amazed because it's not just about being psychic. It's about being able to tap into that soul, which has, like you said, omnipresent, all-knowing, all that always will guide you to your highest good and give you the highest and best answers. So in the classes, I teach them how to do the releasing as a tool, and people always tell me at the end of the classes, I had no idea how this was going to impact my life. But some people do want to do psychic readings, but the majority of people that come to me, they just want to have a better life. And if that's yes. what it does. Yes, and most people are on the assumption that if they, just by the, learning, the idea of learning um, psychic abilities or, or expanding yourself into that ability, and that they think you, they want to become psychic. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. it's about shaving miles off of your spiritual journey, making your life easier, avoiding uh, you know, what's waiting for you behind the building, <laughs> that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's all about making higher choices. So, uh, like I said, you can, you know, walk in easier shoes into your life. Jeannie, do you lean more on the clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentient side, a little bit of all of them? What is your, which, which way do you lean in that? Um, I actually, because of the work that I did uh, back in with uh, in Atlanta, 70, 1979, 1980, all of my ability, all of those abilities that you just mentioned, uh, came out naturally. And the Lim Dr. Limall would and Mrs. Limall would help verify as information would come through. We would we could go to them, and he he would use applied kinesiology or muscle testing to verify with his source, God, and whether or not the information was accurate or true. So what happened was that the clairaudience, the clairvoyance, the clairsentience, and, but ultimately the channeling, that was the last thing to come because you really have to be in a very, very safe and sacred space within yourself to be able to know who it is and discern who it is who wants to speak through you. So I always tell people it's important that you do the inner stuff and clearing out before you ever try to allow someone to speak through you. 
because it they do partially take over your physical being to control your uh, thoughts and, of course, your words. Hmm. Did that answer your question? <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, when I in the past, when I've done uh, readings for, for example, at some spiritual fairs, I would get someone who would be very, very curious about how it's done. And I would say, for example, and I've, as I'm giving my <laughs> example, the reading is unfolding. Uh, for example, I would say, uh, I don't, and they had just sat down, have not even found out their name yet. Let's say your name is John and you just moved from Florida and you just lost a job because your girlfriend. And little did I know by this example, <laughs> the reading had already started because his name was John. Uh-huh. He had just moved from Florida. He lost his wife and his job and da, 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 da. And, yeah. as a, and as his, his eyes are growing the size of silver dollars, I said, am I reading you right now? He said, to the T. And mm-hmm. I said, you just got a brand new car and it's red. He goes, well, tell me how you know that. I said, because do you see that lady that just walked in front of us behind you? Uh, he said, yes. I said, look at what color dress she is wearing. She had a very bright, vivid red dress that says, I am the answer to the question about the car. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's about creating a peripheral sense of awareness. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. How did you and, develop that for yourself? Uh, you, you mentioned the Linwall releasing and, of and course, meditation. meditations. And mm-hmm. so these were your two components, yes? Yes. Then that, that was 30-some years ago. And uh, then I developed the courses that I'm teaching now because, actually, a friend asked me to do it six years, six, seven years ago. And I first started, I was just doing it, you know, just to offer it to my friends. And then because of the background I had in the computer business, part of what I did initially was training. And so I ended up developing these courses and workshops and I, you know, with professional looking PowerPoints and handouts and things so so that people understand what's going on. And of course, I include all the new research that's going on from the HeartMath Institute, the Global Coherence Initiative, um, all the quantum physics that explains how consciousness affects everything. Um, in fact, sub, at a subatomic level, particles are simply in a state of randomness, a, a, actually a state of what I call potential. And then it isn't until us, consciousness, would look at it or observe it, does it become manifested and organized into a solid? So how much of that is affected by what is that in that unconscious mind of ours? How much of that is negative energy that we're putting out? How much is limiting beliefs? So even take that into what double-blind experiments are in, in chemistry or in the pharmaceutical industry. You know, you almost have to say, are really double-blind experiments really accurate? Because something is influencing it in some way from an unconscious level, because consciousness is always attached to it. Isn't it it ironic that how the conscious mind is not always conscious, and the unconscious mind is always conscious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, uh, from, the, from the chat room, Sky33 wants to ask a question directly to okay. you. What are Jeannie's thoughts on a person who tries to navigate from being psychic also how to do so? To turn their abilities off? Is that yeah, what how to get asking? away from it. Yeah, that's the question, yeah. Oh, there are techniques, and it does take practice. I, <clears throat> one of the things that I always say when the, in the very first class when I teach, I got a little toy wand from the dollar store. And in the beginning, I thought, okay, every, people weren't necessarily able to develop, and I wondered to know why, and I realized that I wasn't asking them to practice at home. So what they have, this person needs to do is find a technique that will work for them. One of the things that they, re- they need to realize is that we all have our own signals. All of the psychic skills that you can put de- definitions on, yes, there are definitions, but how that information shows up for you is different for everyone. And that's the importance of coming to a class where I can help you discern that. And this person 
also needs to recognize if they need to turn it off uh, that, you know, they can literally, using the imagination and intention, two things, that's all it takes. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm going to, time's infinity. When people want to choose enlightenment, when people want to turn off their psychic abilities, whatever it is you want to do, I've heard so many teachers say, well, what you got to do is sprinkle some salt over your shoulder and walk around in the circle <laughs> three times. And mm-hmm. I've heard all this, these bells and wiggles and rig- rigmarole. I don't yeah. think it's any of that. It's intention. No. It is choosing Absolutely. consciously and intention. There is no other thing. There's nothing else. It's just right. intention. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. I was listening to something the other day, and, <clears throat> you know, it's, it was a, a friend of mine who is, um, has been studying different modalities. She's a retired therapist, and she was not understanding one of the healing techniques that I use. And I said, well, just think of it like this. You know, even the Reiki symbols are a way to get our intention and attention so we don't focus yes. on the problem. Yes. You know, it could be a picture of Kermit the Frog. If that's what it takes to trigger in you, uh, it's still intention and attention. It, there, there's, there's really nothing else to mention. Um, let's see. Jeannie, I wanted to ask you, when you are in psychic... Oh, let me, let me announce this. If, uh, we have Jeannie White, W-H-Y-T-E, in the show today as my awesome guest. Um, if you want to call on the show, dial 888-919-2355. That's 888-919-2355. Come on the air with Jeannie and I. What is it like when you in psychic mode, when you become, I guess the word would be overwhelmed, do you get overwhelmed? What is your first signal to go off? Clear sentience, clear audience, clear voice, a little bit of all three, or are you at a level now where it's really not divided between those three or four categories? You just get overwhelmed with an impression on every possible layer that might be encrypted that says, this is what's happening. How have you learned to manage your psychic abilities when you don't want it? Or, you know, and when you want to turn it off, what is your way of doing these, this process? I truly believe that doing the kind of meditation where you become still, you become quiet, that is the objective of that kind of meditation because that there is always a slight energetic difference between your own mind chatter, let's say the lower self or the human self, and psychic information. And by practicing, you automatically learn to turn it off. And I do. I don't. Something that I was taught that I didn't know a lot of people didn't know about was the law of non interference, is a spiritual law. And what that means is, you know, many psychics will, and people will, will even come to me and ask me about someone else. Well, if I don't have that person's permission and they're an adult, that's like being a psychic peeping Tom. We have third dimensional rules about that, laws about that. There's a spiritual law about it too. Not to say that people that do it are going to have bad karma because it's like a child. They, um, they didn't know about it. So, you know, there's no bad, there's nothing really bad as repercussions. However, you do learn Check your, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I think it boils down to check your intentions for doing so. I saw mm-hmm. a movie the other day with my son, K Pax, with Kevin Spacey. Absolutely love that movie. It's actually kind of parallel to my own life being friends with Nucleus 8, uh, an extraterrestrial being embodying um, here on this earth plane operating through a woman. But he said something in that movie. He says uh, they were talking about right and wrong. And um, Prote, in the movie, as the alien says, every being in the universe knows right and wrong, Mark. That being said, you know, you were talking about some of the rules and some of the, some of the etiquette of being psychic and when is it okay to really move into someone's experience, someone's field. You already know as you're thinking about doing so, whether you should or not, because your intention, back to that magical, powerful mm-hmm. word, automatically tells you what you're up to. <laughs> Absolutely. Because you be, a couple of things, Keith. One is you become in tune with your body. You know whether it feels right or not. The other thing yes. is we can make up our own rule sets. 
this is something else that, for instance, if the, if a parent or guardian comes to me and it's a child of 18 or below still being supported by that person, I have no problem looking at that other person. If a person is in a coma and I've gotten permission from the person who was in charge of that person's well-being, um, I had an amazing experience because of that where a, my client had, was in Kansas and she sent me an email and said, "Our grandmother, my grandmother has fallen and they, during the extra surgery, she went into a coma. So they, she had a do not resuscitate and they brought her home and it was 10 days and she contacted me they, because the doctors were saying she had nothing. She's had no food, no water, nothing. How can she still be alive? And so because I had that permission from her medical guardian, I was allowed to look into and get the answers for my client. It was an amazing experience too, but it, it comes down to you have to find out what's right for you. If you feel right about it, it's fine. But just knowing about the law of non-interference, you know, it's like knowing that you can't drive down the highway the wrong way and not get hurt. The same thing. You just know. And by practicing, you always know. Jeannie, we're at the bottom of the hour. Would you give out your contact information to Center of Light Radio listening audience, please? Sure. It's info, I-N-F-O, at white, W-H-Y-T-E, light, L-I-G-H-T, center, T-E-N-T-E-R, dot com. There's no need to, if you go to my website, there's no need to put the www in front of it. You just, and there is also a free download of a guided meditation that will help activate everyone's psychic and intuitive abilities. It's, a, it's free, and I suggest that you listen to it. You can even listen to it while you're sleeping, because as Keith said, your unconscious is always awake and aware. <laughs> uh, Jeannie, I'd like to get down to some of the nuts and bolts, down to the mechanics. Okay, mm -hmm. we have a lot of spiritual people. Oh, everyone. <laughs> everybody's spiritual. Let me rephrase that. We have a lot of people listen to this show who are developing their spiritual muscles, uh, expanding into their own consciousness. Um, a lot of people are probably very, very interested in the power and the gifts that you have and would like to reach that level of endowment to make their life easier, to make their life a little more effortless, to not have to go to work, but to create and follow the promptings of guidance. Someone, for example, probably many uh, who are listening now, um, have had those psychic episodes, those moments you think of a song and bam, it's on the radio. You think of someone you had not seen in you know, however many years and you turn around the grocery store and bang, they're there. How mm -hmm. does one begin to really move into the window of developing their psychic craft, their intuitive abilities? Meditation is, is, is always known that through meditation, you, you're developing that quietness, the stillness, to be able to hear that higher self, inner voice, God, whatever you, you want to call it, that is, and it's safe, it doesn't cost anything, and there's a Buddhist saying that if you don't have time, if you, know, you don't have 20 minutes a day to meditate, then you should meditate for an hour. <laughs> but meditation <laughs> is one key. The other thing is doing the inner, I have to call it work. It, but it's, it is inner discovery, whether it's EFT, whether it's uh, quantum touch, it's whether it's Reiki, um, whatever modality or limb while releasing you use, Sedona method, just get in touch with all of that stuff that's been clouding your ability to get in touch with that psych those psychic and intuitive skills. You've just been programmed not to access it. Everybody, all the Aborigines in Australia, people in the Amazon jungle, jungles, even native Hawaiians who haven't been westernized, they all have these abilities because they have not been taught that they can. Mm. So 
doing the meditation and doing the inner work. Um, or, you know, if they live close enough to me, they can come to a workshop, come to the classes. Uh, I haven't gone online with them yet. That is now is uh, obviously on my agenda, but we just haven't been able to, we haven't created it yet. One thing I have found, Jeannie, in my spiritual development, being at spiritual fairs, like, uh, like most people know, I play music in rock and roll venues here in Memphis, and I have all over the country for many, many years, <clears throat> but especially here in Memphis, Tennessee, when people have found out through the, throughout the years that Keith Blanchard is into that weird stuff, <laughs> you, you get some of those people say, well, I heard he was psychic, and so uh, I'm outside on, on break, and then someone eventually walk outside to uh, their curiosity is peaked, and they'll say, hey, I heard you give readings, and we get into this whole dance. But one thing I've learned that helped me develop my ability and it's a very, and I'm sure you would attest to this, it's a very natural part of the process, be it that you read for someone else or be it for yourself, that you doubt what you get. Yeah. The best thing that you can do is love, appreciate the doubt. Um, because I think it's part of the weightlifting program to, to expand your spiritual muscle mass. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 there's a difference between worrying about being wrong and really and truly desiring to be accurate. Mm -hmm. There is a complete polar shift in that perspective. So when I would give readings to people, I had to learn to detach myself from being right. Yeah. Because if truly, if we're all a perfect mirror reflection for each other, there is no such thing as an, an inaccurate reading. They will glean from the experience what they, will, what they get. They get what they get, and what they do with it is truly none of your business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, ha I teach in my class a protocol, and one of, of course, of course, is the protection, whether you use white light or prayer, whatever it is, and then you ground and verify that you're and that you have to let go of the need for the outcome because then you actually get out of the way of allowing it. So you allow it to come through and then you can just start getting accessing the information that is there. Really, it comes from the right side of the brain where we know imagination is, is housed and is incorporated into our brain cells and you start to trust. You have to trust yourself and get out of the box thinking. Here's what I think might be a very, very important question for our listening audience, for those who are wanting to take their intuitive abilities to another level. Uh, we all have the opportunity to wear we're riding down the road, like I said, you think of a song, you didn't ask to think of a song, song idea pops in your head, bang, it's on the radio. When you think of someone in the supermarket, you turn around, bang, you didn't actually just hunt in your mind for something to think about, it showed up. Mm -hmm. Those people who are wanting to take it to another level, how can they determine whether they're clairsentient, clairaudient, or clairvoyant? And I wanted to get your thoughts about this because myself being a musician, um, it's definitely clairaudient. I, though I have uh, the other abilities as well, I think my most dominant self would be Clara Onion. I mean, do you have a very good eyesight in your life? Maybe you're Clara uh, Voyant. And, you know, what is your feeling base? Maybe you're Clara Sentient. How would you guide the people listening who might want to develop their skills, Jeannie? To, you know, because I'm sure everybody might be expecting that the voice comes in like Moses, I am that I am kind of voice. You <laughs> no, know what I mean? uh, yeah. <laughs> How are they to determine? When they are being prompted by guidance from their higher self, uh, be it clairsentient, clairvoyance, or clairvoyant. As I mentioned previously, there's always a slight energetic difference between them making it up or a higher voice through your imagination. But the key is to practice. Practice everything. One of the examples that I teach in my class in the very first thing is that how information shows up for them is going to be unique. And I give people this exercise as we promised we would. I would get, I'd like to get that in. Um, what you would do is simply think of two things that you think of one thing you need to make a decision on. Very, very nominal decision like going to the store tonight or tomorrow. Two options. And then using your imagination, you 
close your eyes to keep from getting any other sensory input, and you imagine a jacket, a very plain jacket, not one you've ever worn or owned or wanted, and the, take the first choice, let's say going to the store tonight, and then you just imagine it written all over that choice, written all over that jacket, and then you see yourself pulling the jacket on your left arm, your right arm, and onto your body, keeping your eyes closed, and notice what shows up. You notice what you notice. And something will always happen to that jacket. It, will, it may turn scratchy. It may fall off. It may be too tight. It may be perfect. It could change into anything. Have them take the jacket off. That's important. Now you imagine another very plain jacket, not even white, but just plain, one you've never owned. You need to be neutral about this jacket. And the second option, let's say going to the store tomorrow. You see it written all over the jacket. And then you pull it onto your left arm, on your right arm, and onto your body with your eyes closed and notice what you notice. Notice what happens. Notice how you feel. Notice how you feel in your heart as well as your gut. And that exercise for practicing to get in touch with your intuition is amazing. And to make decisions, it it is like jumpstarts your abilities all the time for everyone. It sounded like almost like remote viewing what you describe because the jacket seems to be the t- a target, a non-descriptive target that brings you to a place and to another possibility, another reality. Well, you know, I taught myself remote viewing years ago, and then I learned the protocol when it was finally published by the government, and I actually lived in D.C. and worked in D.C. with the government agencies for 16 years, but remote viewing, the government put that as and created that as a separate psychic ability, and I don't think it is, because people will get the information however their psychic abilities want to show show up for them. Mm. Mm. it's like doing a remote healing or even the lady that I told you that was in the coma some people would have said that's remote viewing but if you go by the definition of what the government has to say they wouldn't say it is because it doesn't follow their protocol their protocol is very strict yeah, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll save that for the for your return visit to Center of Light Ready. Uh, do you have something that our listeners can access, access now to help them get started to activate their psych? Oh, that was the, the coat analogy, correct? Do you have another one, no, something go, that they can to, use? Yeah, if they go to my website, there is a hypnosis that they can play while they're sleeping, put it on their on their phone and let it, or MP3 player, let it play while they're sleeping. And it's, terminology that I know is safe that will help them develop automatically start to recognize when their psychic abilities are showing up. It's a five-minute guided meditation um, or hypnosis, whichever one you want to call it, and it's free. You just go to my website and put your name in like you always do on every website, and you'll get confirmation, and then you can download it. How long did it take you to manage control your abilities being so wide open that you are because i'm sure as wide open as you are um you've got this under control (laughs) if not (laughs) you probably wouldn't have a life as a human being (laughs) right right um well you know it, it i did that intensive because what happened when i started to meditate one of the first messages that I knew wasn't me, was that Dr. Limwell was supposed to teach me something. And it was like, what is he going to teach me? I'm not, you know, I'm going to have to quit my computer job. I'm going to be a secretary. What, you know, what's going to happen? So I went up to him after one of the free Wednesday night classes where I was getting to know him and learn about the teachings of concept therapy. And I said, Doc, I don't know what's going on, but I'm told that you're supposed to teach me something. And he said, well, okay. And he said, yeah, he's, you know, he checked with using kinesiology muscle testing was it on himself. And he said, you're one of the ones. And I said, what? He said, because they already had, some, they were already doing these workshops and they kind of had little groupies already hanging out with them. And 
he said, Ruth and I, my wife and I, in a meditation were told that they were to privately mentor 12 young adults and they were not to choose them, that every person would get their own message. And the first person that came along, actually, he didn't get the message it directly. He got it through his sister, who is Patty Cota Robles, who is the, wow. the major seat. Yeah, it was, that was the first person in our group of 12. So to answer your question, 12 of us hung out together. We were best friends. We never let anybody get away with any negative emotion or any limiting belief. And I went to workshops every other weekend. But now, through my, you know, that was an intensive thing that I did for about a year. And that's how they de- I developed those abilities. No one has to do that. By taking the classes that you can find at really reputable places, like the Edgar Casey Institute has um, have classes. There's Delphi, I think, in Atlanta. There's a metaphysical school there. If you go to reputable reputable metaphysical schools, they can also teach you how to do this. Um, or if you're in Raleigh, you can come see me, <laughs> and I can teach you how to I do know. it. Mm-hmm. I, I would love to get uh, Patricia Cota Robles on my show. I, I checked into her some years ago, and of course, she's a very busy lady. Yeah, hadn't heard anything back, but she she and I parallel in our love for certain fields of spirituality. I really like what she does. I've read a few of her books some time ago. Uh, it was a big, thick book, blue ink, blue uh, ink, blue letters on the paper, something about mm-hmm. heaven on earth. It was just an amazing book, and it actually somewhat uh, helped me put my feet on this particular path that I am. Oh, on. good. Yeah, I really like to work. I'd like to interview her at some point. So if you happen to say hi to her, send her my way. <laughs> I will. I, can, I have her direct email address. I can easily call her because I actually dated her brother for a while when we were in the Well, there we together. go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good to be on the end. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so I hope your listening audience has enjoyed this jacket exercise. And please have them contact me if they'd like the instructions, written instructions. I'll be glad to email it to them. Give us that uh, contact information again, Jeannie White with a Y. Mm-hmm. It's info, I, like short for information, at white, W-H-Y-T-E, light, L-I-G-H-T, center, C-E-N-T-E-R dot com. Info at white, light, center, and it's white with a Y. It's Scottish. <laughs> Jeannie, as you go out throughout your day, you mix, mix and mingle with people. I'm sure you're picking up little glimpses here and there and i'm sure you've learned to tune that out but certain places you may allow some glimpses to show up and you kind of feel it helps you to feel where you are what energy you're submersed in i get all that does your into i'm not no i know it doesn't but do you ever get information about the state of the world the world's affairs versus just bumping energetically into people and picking up on the energy my question is to you as we come to the top of the hour and sadly towards the end of this show what are you seeing quote feeling hearing intuiting about the state of the world of course everything's possible but where are we and from what you're receiving through your uh, ability um that is not something I focus on. That's not my job. That's not one of my purposes. However, I when I I, I conduct a meditation and channeling once a month uh, because I was taught to connect with the ascended masters: Jesus, Buddha, Kasumi, Saint Germain, Archangel Michael, White Buffalo, Catholic, and all of those individuals. That's how I was taught, and. So I always connect through them, and I do channeling once a month. And they can go to people can go to my website and listen to those channelings. Oh, and, sweet! Um, in fact, the last one was talking about the Pope, and uh, also the world affairs. And the month before that was when Mother Mary came through and said about we are always swimming in this ocean of God. Um, so especially last this past month in July, um, there is a audio of what they had to say about what's going on in the world. So they often bring those things up, but I don't recall what's being said. I'd have to listen to it myself to tell you. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, but from you, a spiritual standpoint, I know we're always protected. I know it's going to be okay. Yeah, I had a guest on my show uh, a couple of weeks back, and he uh, said that when he was 11 years old, when he came into his own, he said he knew that we were going to, quote, do it this time. We were going to make it this time, implying mm-hmm. in the past time, be it Atlantis or whatever civilization he was referring to. Um, we're coming to the top of the hour. Would you like to leave us with important information, important message that you would like to share with our listening audience, Jeannie, about what you do or whatever you can leave us with that might help us to take with us and better the world? Yeah, try, think outside the box. Practice mindful or peaceful. The goal of the meditation is to become still. Practice meditation. If you do nothing else but that, your intuitive abilities are going to surface. It's been proven. You know, the, all the ancient mystics have always meditated. Christ meditated. Buddha meditated. Um, you know, it's, all, it's a practice that has been proven safe, effective, and free. <laughs> I'm working you out for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, through meditation, I'm sure everyone uh, has had uh, the experience of meditation and the power that is latent in, in that. I remember when I got on this path, I was meditating three times a day, morning, noon, and night. And wow, the windows were opening up left and right. Yeah. And yeah. until my life became somewhat second nature with meditation uh, i still formally meditate but my daily life is an open-eyed meditation i'm i'm always in the from the perspective in the in, in the intention of uh, i'm always meditative but especially for those who are new in the path of meditation you start to try it because you have been quote the same for so long when you start creating the vibrations of meditation miracles and magic and synchronicity begin to happen right away they happen often and they happen very powerful and very strong and very big mm-hmm. things may level out then then i guess time to up your meditation up your spiritual practice mm-hmm. but w- once we get on our path and we're beating our feet towards our bliss we may not quote see as many of those little magical things it's because now your life is the magic versus the exactly. magic happening to you exactly i've just like that you asked me about that. I've had um, students ask me that, and I had to think about it because it has become second nature to me. Um, <laughs> you know, the so-called little miracles uh, show up, uh, just little things, that, but everything. I don't even think about it anymore. I stay in this calm state because of the meditation and the inner discovery or inner work that I've done that I know that I'm always being guided and directed to the right people and right to be in the right place at the right time. Jeannie, it's been my pleasure having you here in Center of Light Radio. Well, thank you. It's been my pleasure to join you and your listening audience. Uh, that door always swings open to you. You can bet on that. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Bye, Keith. Bye, bye, love. Everyone, Jeannie White, last name W H Y T E, here in Center of Light Radio. I really enjoy talking to this beautiful lady. Um, next week on my show, we have Lewis and Janie Santiago. They are known as the love coaches. Doesn't only mean relationship, it means every aspect of love in your life. And it's going to be a fantastic show. They actually heard me through Center of Light Radio. So the word is spreading. We are reaching people all over the internet. So I want to say thank you for being here every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I am your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Remember when you lay down tonight, take your nap during the day. Whatever it is that you do that you find yourself laying down or just being peaceful, sitting down, relaxing, breathe that magical breath. Taste God as it flows through your body. Breathe from the space of wanting something, desiring something beyond what you've always known as you. And you will discover that who you really are lies in, through, with, because of the breath. 